On today's podcast, we got real. Well, we got real about Facebook groups and pages, and then we got real about community. We got real about how to nurture them, how to build them, how to have the best community you could ever have. And then I share about all my, uh, let's call them breakthroughs over the last couple months of where I was failing in our community and where I was failing to show up for you and failing to show up by example to create those connections and bridges. And so I break down the fourth wall and I explain my side and then how we're reinvigorating and how you can too. So I'm gonna stop now because I think the rest of the episode is way better than this intro, but either way, let's get into the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Mind of George Show. And today, we're going to be doing a little bit of catch up, just personally, but we're going to be talking about Facebook groups versus Facebook pages, which one to use, our feelings about them, strategies around community, around nurturing that community. And we're going to cover that, my thoughts, with some hows and things to focus on in today's episode. And so I am really, really excited. Uh, It's July 5th. Uh, when I'm recording this. So happy 4th of July uh, for those of you listening to this uh, yesterday. I hope it was great. We had a fun, fun day planned. I actually feel like a savage for what I got done yesterday because I was on one yesterday. I went and woke up ready to crush the day. I came to the office, recorded a podcast or outlined a podcast, and then I went hiking and There's this mountain behind my office that I love hiking because it's like a 10 minute drive. And I always set these benchmarks for myself. And uh, the last time I was out there three weeks ago, I timed myself from where I parked my car to the top of the mountain, which is 3.2 miles with 1900 feet of elevation gain. And in hike slash running it up three weeks ago, I did it in 58 minutes. And then yesterday, I kind of made a deal with my demons. Uh, July 4th is a very emotional time for me for a lot of reasons. Um, And I had emotions to process that were just mine, feelings that I just got to sit with. They were my body inviting me to sit with them and I needed the space to go sit with them. And so I made a deal. I was going to sit with them. And so I got to my car, I got out of the back of my car and I was like, I'm beating my time. And I'm not stopping. And this is just me pushing myself. And so it was like that rule was simple. I can drink water, but I have to move. I can slow down my pace, but I have to keep moving. Like at no point until I get to the top, can I stop? And so I made this deal and I made sure I didn't hit go until like I was crystal clear that there was no other option. And I went. And I was really over cocky in the beginning. And then I slowed down. And there were probably 13 or 14 critical points where I literally almost came to a stop and convinced myself that I should. And I just, I found it and it it normally came out with like a roar or like or a cry a few times and those emotions would come out and then I keep going. And so needless to say, I did a lot of inner work yesterday um, in the morning and then made it to the top and I made it to the top um, 11 minutes faster 12 minutes faster or something like that. So I made it to the top in like 47 minutes, 48 minutes, uh, which is insane. And then I was like, I'm going back down. And then I ran down. And so I was up and down in like an hour and 34 minutes. And my body felt amazing. I felt amazing. So then I got done, cleaned up. And I was like, all right, Branson's at the parade. And then I mowed like 20 acres. Uh, thank you, Rob Bailey, flooding apart your tractor. Broke it a few times, fixed it a few times, ended up mowing all of that, finishing with like five minutes to spare to get ready, go to the grocery store, pick up supplies, pack Branson in the car. Me, Lindsay Branson, uh, one of our nannies going to our friend's house for the 4th of July. So we go there, we barbecue, we cook. And then at about 10.30 p.m., we had to call it. We couldn't let off fireworks because there was massive amounts of rain and wind. And so packed up the kids, brought them home. 
and then my daughter called at like 1230 last night after I'd fallen asleep because uh, the keys fell out of her pocket for her car and somebody picked them up and she couldn't find them and couldn't get home. So I went to pick her up and then we went on an Apple AirTag adventure last night trying to find the keys. We think we found the house they were in. And so I just felt really, really accomplished after yesterday. And I just feel like catching up and saying, hi, here I am. I'm really excited to talk about today's podcast. (laughs) And the reason I share that story is today's podcast is about community more than anything, right? We're going to talk about Facebook groups. We're going to talk about Facebook pages. But what we're really going to talk about is connection and community. And the reason I share that story is I have started to realize over the last six months as I've been going through some challenging times, I convinced myself that I was focusing outward, that I was being transparent and being vulnerable and authentic, which are things that I swear by and they are the reason I'm so happy and I do this work. And I started to realize that I wasn't and I wasn't connecting on social media. I wasn't connecting on this podcast. I had convinced myself that I was, but I was very detached from my feelings and um, it got dark and I'm now the happiest I've ever been, the lightest I've ever been, the most joyous I've ever been, the most clear I've ever been. And it's because I leaned back into you and I started realizing that I wasn't connecting and it didn't matter what platform I was on is that my job is to create community. My job is to create relationships and in relationships, there's only one of two roles, a leader or a follower. And I definitely wasn't leading and I wasn't leading openly. So there was nowhere for people to connect. And so there's parts of my life that I just stopped talking about and I miss talking about them and I miss connecting and I miss sharing stories. And I've been in so many rumination buckets of also being self-critical of like, I talk too much and nobody wants to hear what I have to say. And you just keep saying the same things over and over. And then the other side of like, but that's what you're supposed to do. And you know that it works. And what I realized (coughs) through that process is all that rumination was happening because I was analyzing the work or judging myself against the work or trying to do the work, but I wasn't being it. I wasn't actually putting the rubber to the road and that all shifted. And it just reminded me that community is wherever we decide to plant it. It's wherever we decide to put our flag and say, this is where I'm going to pour my garden, plant my garden, water my garden. And this is all of me. And so First, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't realize that I was hiding, but I was kind of hiding. (laughs) And I'm not hiding anymore, and it feels so good to be back. And uh, most of you are probably going to tell me that I wasn't really gone, and and I hear that too. And I, I see that perspective as well, but I'm just full of gratitude to be able to record this podcast, to be able to connect with you, to be able to share this stuff, and most importantly, to be able to help you. And so, Our DMs are open for me and Ashley and our team. We answer them. We want to help you. We want to connect with you. If, if, if 20 of you need to get on a call because you have this one customer journey problem, literally DM us and we will put it together and I will jump on that call and I will help. Like that is what we do. That is what this is about. And I just wanted to reopen that door when it comes to this conversation. So we got a question about this and they wanted us to talk about Facebook groups versus pages. And one of the things that we see all the time is that people literally get stuck trying to figure out which one they should focus on when it comes to just specifically their Facebook promotion. But you can also hear that this applies to Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, right? Thinking about YouTube, there's YouTube videos, there's YouTube shorts, there's YouTube lives, there's a lot of strategies on YouTube. So these apply across the board. So I see that all the time. And I fell victim to that as well. And we we look because we want to know, like, where are we going to get the bo- best reach? Where are we going to get the most amount of eyeballs? Uh, where can we connect with people the most, right? Like, our desire to want to master them all and be on them all is a very, very warranted feeling. It's, it's completely, completely justified. Um, and I've been reminded and and I was reminded early on from some incredible coaches and mentors of mine. And they're like, yes, you can be 
and have 10 gardens, but if you only have a hose for one, you can only water one at a time. So none of them are ever going to hit their true potential. They're never going to hit their true depth. And it was a really, really powerful concept for me to understand. But when it comes down to it, there is no perfect choice, right? So for me, in the lens of Facebook, when I think about Facebook groups versus Facebook pages, as someone who personally has never really used paid media for my internal business, right? So for this podcast, for our coaching, for our offers, for our events, um, everything we've always focused on is owned and earned media, right? So the things that we own and then adding value to other people's audiences and then borrowing or us borrowing the attention of their audience and sending it back in our direction, right? So for me, I used to have a Facebook page when I was a food blogger. And back then, that was the way. That was the game. And I got that page up to a half a million uh, likes. And over the years, as that page was running, there was this deeper connection happening, which was groups, right? And what ended up happening for me personally is that my audience basically demanded to me that we don't want to be on a page. We want to be in a group. And there were a lot more benefits and it worked better and it created deeper connections. On paper, it didn't look as quote unquote beautiful, like the vanity metrics per se didn't look as quote unquote beautiful, but the payoff was exponential in like 15 different areas. And so naturally I just gravitated and stuck towards groups. And so for me, the way that I see it is Facebook pages are a critical tool as well as Facebook groups, but they're for tools for different parts of the bucket or for different phases of the customer journey, right? And so for me, I look at it that a Facebook page is a place where you can basically have free billboards on the side of the highway, right? You can have free billboards, you can post it, people will be driving by, some will see it, some will look at it, some will ignore it, some will look at it five times, then look, and then eventually someone might call the number or do something, right? So I look at that, a Facebook page, as like free billboards and free advertising on the highway. And your job is to utilize it to stop and get somebody's attention as quickly as possible, and then in that moment, have them understand that you have something of value or credibility or service to offer them that matches something in their life. That's it, that's the whole point, right? And then a Facebook group is when those people realize that something matches or they're interested or they wanna know more, they have a place to go explore deeper. But the Facebook group can also be advertised on its own as an invitation for those who are already aware of what they're working on or already aware of what you might have or might just be interested to start at that level. And so that's how I see the difference between them. And then when it comes to paid media, I am of the camp and of the belief that you should only be running paid media on Facebook pages. If you have an existing owned base, right? People that you're in a relationship with and you engage with them because those are the people that are going to help your ads and help them be cheaper and respond to comments on them and go to bat for you in the comments when people get mean to you. But across the board, it makes them work so much better. So it's for me, it's kind of pointless to have without them. But I do have friends and people that run profitable businesses without them and they just live in an acquisition business. They're paid first. I'm owned and earned first. And so then I look at it like, okay, cool. Well, if I'm going to start running paid media, I'm going to have to focus on that Facebook page. I'm going to have to build community, really put my effort in. And then I can add lighter fluid to the fire, which would be paid media on a Facebook, which would have that page. And so that's how I delineate for me personally. I think for everybody else, for you listening, you could be in one of those two camps. You could be in the paid media a camp or you could be in the owned media camp right or some combination of both neither is right neither is wrong it's more so how you're going to build that community how you're going to nurture that audience and where you're going to spend your time because the challenge that we run into is that when we even think about what i just said and how i break that down you can just take that at face value and be like, well, that makes sense, I'll try it, and then go practice it for 60 days, and then you'll know, yep, it worked or it didn't work. The challenge that we run into is most people will just overanalyze, overanalyze, myself included, and I did it for so long, 
but the only true way to learn is to give something a chance and really invest in its life, like treating it like a seed in a garden. You know that if you follow the instructions, that seed is going to grow into food. And you also know if you do not follow the instructions and you get impatient and you try to rush it, or you pretend it's just going to do it without you paying attention, even though you can't see a tangible result, you know you're not going to get the food, right? And so I feel like with what I see and what I hear in most of the conversations I have with entrepreneurs, it's that all of them have way more than enough evidence to choose a path, to try something, but we almost get stuck in decision fatigue. And truth be told is most of the evidence and almost all of the evidence you need to make a decision can only come from when you actually start something and then give it time to mature like that seed, knowing that it's under the ground, right? And so for me, what's more important is to figure out where the best place you can build a community is, right? For me, it's to know where you want to spend your time, where you can connect with people the most, where they might want to spend their time, right? And so I say this all the time, you will never win on width, but you're guaranteed to win on depth, right? And we we idolize these people. I get this from entrepreneurs. They're like, I want my social to look like this person. And they're like, I want this, 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 this. And then when we look at it, they realize that that person is really only known for one platform. And then when that platform hit a certain size, there was some bleed over and carry over, but they're still driving 90% of it from that main platform, right? And so one of the famous questions that I used to ask myself when I was deciding where I wanted to build community, uh, and I ask this to clients now, and I'm like, when you wake up in the morning and you're not supposed to pick up your phone, what's the first social media app you open and you go to? And typically it's an Instagram or a Facebook, and I'm like, awesome. Do you have an audience there? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, that's your first place, right? And I say that all the time because I feel like wherever you naturally want to spend your time, you have a lot better chance of winning on that platform, creating depth and amplifying how fast you can do it because it's naturally a part of your behavioral system already. I don't know if that's a thing, behavioral system. I didn't catch it till it was out of my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. So I think more so in asking, okay, should it be a Facebook group or a Facebook page? Should it be an Instagram community or YouTube, right? You need to ask yourself some critical questions and really, really sit with them and think about them. And so I wrote some down and I'm going to give you some to, to chew on, right? And so when you think about the first question is, number one, if you're building a community or wanting to build a community or wanting to build an audience, there's a reason. And that reason is to sell a product, to sell a service, to put content out, to get attention, to get subscribers. But there's something of exchange of value, right? And so when it comes down to what that exchange of value is, when you know that, that answer to that question can also help you very quickly clarify what type of community. And so uh, an example of this would be if somebody is selling a uh, supplement for seniors over 70, I'm going to bet that they're most likely not going to be running an Instagram channel, right, at all. <laughs> I doubt that those people are consuming Instagram and shorts, right? Uh, I don't think they're going to be running TikTok, right? I don't, right? And so when you start to think about, irregardless of your product or service, more so the human being, what they're doing in their life, who they are. You know these things if you're selling a product and service. You can already start to narrow down maybe where you should or shouldn't build your community, right? So that's one question that you can have, right? Another question is, is your community going to be open or closed to the public, right? Or both. For example, uh, I used to talk openly about my eating disorders, uh, my eating disorder when I had my food blog. And I would realize that every time I talked about it publicly on social media, like public facing on my Instagram, on my Facebook page, I would get a whole lot of likes and I'd get a whole lot of support, but nobody would really open up. But then the moment I would talk about it in our closed Facebook group, those same people would give me paragraphs on how they understand and they're struggling with the same thing because the nature of what we were working on 
dictated that they only felt safe to share it in that container, right? And so that's another thing to think about, right? Um, another one, do you already have an existing community that maybe you're not seeing, right? So one of the things I say is you shouldn't adopt any more children until you can feed the ones that you have. And one thing that we see people get stuck in, myself included, is like, hey, uh, okay, I have this community and it's kind of doing good, but I want more, right? And, and what they're doing is they're going to try to add more, but there's so much opportunity in the community that they already have that's not being utilized and not being extracted, and we just can't see it because we're not really, really paying attention, right? And so you have to ask yourself, do I have a community? Does it exist already, um, right? Uh, for me, I don't like being on social media, but if I had to choose a platform, it's YouTube. Uh, my second one would be Instagram. My very last one would be Facebook. Um, but no matter which way I slice it, I have learned to love Facebook because my audience loves Facebook groups, right? And so there's a part of this and also understanding that your message, your offer, your service is only as effective as people's ability to receive it, to feel safe enough to learn to have a community sometimes to pick up evidence to know if this is the right place or not for them, right? And so as much of this is, is about us asking, where should we spend our time? Where should we build our community? We also have to go to the other side of the table and put ourselves in their chair and say, where do they want one? Where are they already spending their time, right? So that's another question I ask. If you're thinking about where should I build my community? And I'm like, well, who are some of your customers? Where are they spending their time? Where do they hang out? Ask them, right? Like ask them how they prefer to consume content. Ask them what format they like it in. Ask them where they want to connect the most. And understand that the best solution is going to be like a Venn diagram of them matched together just to give you a starting point because then your community will be as amazing as you want it to be based on how much you invest in it, right? And there's this story, and I'm gonna tell you this story because it applies directly to community. I love watching documentaries and I, I watched a wine documentary uh, from I think the lead singer of God's, Godsmack. And they basically, he bought this piece of property and he said, I wanna grow wine here. And everyone's like, you can't, like it's impossible. You will never grow wine, you will never grow wine, blah, 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 blah. He had a vision. He said he spent a whole lot of money because he, he almost started believing everybody was right and didn't even believe himself anymore, but he kept going and kept going. Long story short is it took quite a few years, I think four, four to five years, if I remember correctly, but in all that consistent work and doing it, even though they weren't seeing the results, it like regenerated the soil, created this incredible wine. And then his first year, they won like one of the best, I believe it was a Cabernet Sav, Sauvignon, um, the first time, like won an award, and now it's known as this incredible wine, right? That's how I see community. I understand that if I have a group of people or I assemble a group of people, if I assemble them or I have them, no matter where we are in what environment we're in, we can make that the best experience possible, but we have to fully, fully own it. We can't half own it. We can't do the things that we want to do, but they want us to do something different like we have to embody it right mike tyson says discipline is doing the things that you hate doing like you love doing them right there are parts of social media there are parts of community building that i don't enjoy but i love them because they create the community and i love every one of you but my dream would be i could snap my fingers and all of us would be in a room together being able to have a conversation at the same time because i want to connect with everybody right but we can't do that. And so we make content and we post and then we assemble events and then we talk in the DMs and we connect everywhere that we can. But my dream would be that we were just in a room, right? And so when you start to think about these things, you start to recognize that there's two sides, but you have to ask all these questions. And then the secret to this, and this is the secret, is that your garden is guaranteed to produce food and produce fruit and to produce the things that you want as long as you're willing to give it the time and make the adjustments needed. And that's really, really the secret to this is that if it's a Facebook page, if it's a Facebook group, totally fine. But if you're going to be on one and you're going to sign up for the race, none of us, and I, I, I hope not, 
would ever say, hey, I'm going to train for a year and then I'm going to sign up to the race to lose. Never. Nor would you train for a year and then sign up for the race and knowingly go up to the starting line without your running shoes on and give yourself a disadvantage. It's no different here. When you commit to the race, if you're going to commit to doing it, that means it's not going to work every time. It's not going to work the first time. And, and newsflash, once it starts working, it's going to stop working the next day <laughs> because that's the nature of humanity. That's the fun part of marketing. That's the fun part of connecting. None of us want to live in the Truman Show, but we can't get upset that we don't live by Truman Show rules. And so when you can laugh about it, when you can understand that, then all you do is focus on making adjustments. You're like, oh, that worked, that didn't, let's try it again. Keeping community at the core. And so I think the more important thing to focus on is that, okay, if I have one, before I try to build another one, let me go deep in this one, let me nurture this one, and let me give this one the absolute best chance and beyond the best chance. And then if you have one that works, before you go launch another one, make sure it's buttoned up, make sure there's no leaks in the bucket. And then understand that as you grow and your customers grow and your business grows, so is the nature of your relationship and it might evolve. And so you have to be willing to make those changes. Gary Vaynerchuk has said it for years. If you're romantic about how you do business, you'll go out of business. If you're romantic about how you're running things and building community and you don't adjust when everybody else is, including your audience, it's going to be too late and the ship is going to sail. So I think for you, for me, for everybody, the reminder is, is, is home is wherever we make it. Community is wherever we invest in it. Wherever those people are, wherever we are, and we choose to meet, and we invest in that at the deepest level, we water the soil, we nurture it, we give it sunlight, we give it patience, we allow it to exist, but we give it our full intention. That's what's going to win, right? We say relationships beats algorithms. Of course they do. And when you build relationships with people, they influence the algorithm to show them more of your stuff and more similar stuff, which brings more people in. And that's the nature of this. And so this is always going to be the most important part. So here's my reminder. You can have the community that you want. You just have to stamp your flag and say, this is my hill and I am standing on it until my entire community is here. And you don't stop until you get there. And that's going to be the secret. So that's how I'm going to wrap today. I know I made this one a little bit longer because I threw a lot of personal stories in. <laughs> I'm choosing to celebrate it. So I'm not self-conscious about talking so much. But either way, I love you all. I appreciate you all. Remember that relationships will always beat algorithms. This is another episode of the Mind of George show. You will either see me in your eyeballs or you will hear me in your earballs. I think I said that right. But either way, here's the outro.